Oh, hello, hello, and a massive hello to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great weekend wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing. This is 50 Pips rocking and rolling here on the 24th of September, 2017. So, no trade calls, no recommendations, the response for the own stuff as usual. We're here for educational purposes only. What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? As we go into this new week, so again, I'm not going to comment on all the uh, Trump tweets and everything suffice to say. Um, it doesn't seem like things are uh, calming down. So I would uh, retweeted a bunch of those. I'd, I'd urge you to have a look. Uh, so we'll have to see. We still have an awful lot of geopolitical risk, a lot of headline risk. So it is what it is. We'll have to deal with it. The only issue, or I think the main thing to keep in mind, is that the market is seriously not pricing in any of this, right? So um, heads up on that. In terms of the week, apart from normal data, uh, which I think everybody can uh, take a look at the data calendar, I think uh, what's really interesting or what has the potential to add a little bit more volatility is that we pretty much have every single central bank on deck this week, right? So we've got Karuda speaking on Monday. We've got Draghi speaking on Monday, too. We've got a lot of, you know, other junior members out of the central bank speaking all week. You know, even have Kashkari speaking. You've got Brainard speaking a bunch of times. But uh, Tuesday, you've got Yellen. On Wednesday, um, you have uh, the um, you have Polo speaking. You have the RBNZ rate decision on Thursday. You've got Karuda again. Uh, you've got Carney speaking. You've got uh, the RBA that's going to be talking uh, on Friday. You've got um, uh, I think who is it? I think you, apart from the GDP out of Canada and the current account of the UK, you've got Draghi and Carney speaking again, also with some other FOMC uh, speakers. So again, it's, there's a an awful lot of. Um, potential headline risk. So where does that leave us with the charts? Well, the charts were right here with very familiar territory with the VIX continuing to getting keeps on getting crushed. We're going to make the same call we've always been making whenever we've come back into this zone. And our call is back into the high teens before we see a daily close below the nine mark. Right. That hasn't changed. And if anything, the way things are shaping up with all the central bank speak and, you know, um, geopolitical risk, um, this is a decent week for us to, to get some kind of a move. If you remember in the last Outlook video, what we said is our focus was on some kind of a healthy retracement on equities to come in, which could turn into something bigger. But our focus was on the fact that. Uh, we consider the NASDAQ had broken, the NASDAQ was weak, and you had to keep an eye on Apple and all those tech names coming into the week because that's likely, that was the tell, and that's what was likely um, going to be the key driver in terms of the most interesting uh, um, action on the equity side, right? And if you see, basically, you know, we didn't see any disappointment there. We got Apple selling off very, very aggressively, trying to come back down and fill this gap. We talked about this repeatedly during the week. So keep an eye on these 5650s. If we get a daily close or we start to move through there, it should accelerate to the downside very aggressively. So right here, as we go into the week, this becomes major resistance. And then those 4540s, 4550s are the support. Um, and the action was fairly aggressive across the board. Look at Tesla, right? If you look at the weekly on Tesla, very, very aggressive reaction. You know, we talked about the fact that we'd see a lot of choppy action inside this range. And look at that poked its head above and now it's trying to come back below. If we get a daily close below these um, 350 mark, again, our base case is 2080s. These are coming into play. No real change there. You can also see on NVIDIA, not a pretty pattern here looking very very heavy and again amazon uh, no big change you know once we got this uh, puke here you know we thought this this is it you know any move back into the 1000 is a nice short for a move back in 920s that's going to be the big pivotal mark for ultimately a much bigger correction back into the 850s so something like that so that is in play we'll have to see if um if that gets uh, gets traction and um, and what happens on the S&P again, keep in mind that, uh, you know, again, the S&P failing there at a key zone still around that twenty five hundred. The, the numbers to watch are twenty five hundred on S&P, six thousand on Nasdaq and the twenty two K on the Dow. The only thing I'd say is if you see last week with the, the rut 
ramped up back into those old highs. So if anything, you, you want to keep an eye on how the rut trades at the beginning of the week. If everything starts getting sold off, that might be the best RR or the best uh, asymmetric short out there. And don't be surprised to see NASDAQ popping a little bit, but any pop should be an interesting uh, opportunity to try and get some some shorts on or add to shorts in terms of the dxy the other theme we had was basically time for the dxy to to base and rally a little bit and correct even if it's going to be a healthy uh correction we said for a bigger a nicer confirmation or a more solid bull case to the dxy we really needed to see this close the week back above the 200 week right but having said that that doesn't change the fact that, as we said here, you know, back above the 9130, then it would be healthy to see a potential move all the way back into those 9440s, right? Just to see it correct back there. Really, to get a more aggressive squeeze, you really need to get that move back above that 200 or a strong close very, very early in the week above there. Um, if you're looking at gold, a very interesting zone, right? We've actually corrected back a uh, beautiful little opportunity to get back short or to peel off some longs with that failure at the 1350s and right here it's coming back into very interesting zone now the big question is um, is it going to bounce hard or is there still more downside now the way we look at things if this was going to bounce hard quick it would have already bounced it wouldn't have pierced and traded below the 1300 so with lack of any um, market really pricing and geopolitical issues or anything really serious hitting the wires this is holding heavy so the way we're looking at this early on in the week if this holds below the 1300 we would not be surprised as we've been discussing for a while to see this come back into the 50 back 61 zone of this whole area and we would consider this a very nice opportunity to get long if we trade back above the 1300 early on in the week then it could bounce from there ultimately we would not expect to see uh, a day close or a week close below the 1250 as long as we don't get that our base case is still that we are in um uh, retracement and that ultimately we have to go back up and test 1350s 1380s 1400s no change there crude what's happening on crude a lot of chop around this um, 50 now you guys know we've been very bearish crude we covered a while ago and we just hasn't seen any real reason to put those shorts back on from a swing perspective right and as we said as we're hovering around this 50 you know We'd love to get back short, but look at the action. It's not getting smacked down, and, and when it's holding so close to that level, you know, chances are it needs to take out weaker hands, and it's still holding bid. All those dips keep on getting bought, and once we continue to close above the 50, technically there's very little reason to get aggressively short, right? Of course, you can always build a bull case or a bear case to fit your narrative or to fit your bias, but really, technically, it's holding a bid so we'll have to see how this trades if it keeps on coiling like this you know chances are it's, it needs to take out some more weak hands and we wouldn't be surprised to see it trade all the way back into the 55s um, so for us looking for new shorts we need to see either action much higher or we need to see a sharp failure and it trading back below the 50. it's a classical example where if you want to get short the way we look at things we'd much rather pay up a wider stop once it's trading below the 50 than trying to just short into strength like this uh, longs are probably going to be looking to buy any dip into the 50 for this to continue to rotate higher and take out those weaker players all the things being equal we don't think it's particularly interesting right here right now but we're definitely looking at the chart uh, euro what's going on on euro well um, as we said on euro um, last week's really the um, even though ultimately this still has room to run higher shorter term the the only trade on the board the asymmetric risk reward was to uh, get short on these failures right and to look for a potential move all the way back down into these 1650s or at the very least right to, to, to see this come back down into this um oops descending um in this channel right so as we're going into the week no change this is a big chop zone 1250 1650 failure to take out here 
path of least resistance is choppy but to try and come back down and test here this is going to be a very big bull bear line unless we trade above or below this zone we think it's just a lot of chop a lot of noise and that's probably going to coincide to see if the dollar can catch a strong bid above that 200 week if not just going to be very very choppy same thing with that dollar strength coming in across the board right yen all the way back into the 112 bull bear line above 112 do not be surprised to see this coming back into the 1450s 1500s back below then it gets heavy the way this is trading unless you get some kind of comment out of a central banker unless unless you get something out of north korea something like that chances are this is going to continue to grind higher right any risk off then it gets interesting but for now it's uh, look at it what uh 112 to yen is the same as 50 is to crude right that's the way we're looking at it cable we'll have to see how this trades it's back into that uh it's still inside this uh, chop zone like like euro a lot of wheeling and dealing a lot of brexit stuff interesting shorting opportunities um i think a lot of people are trying to figure out what happened with the downgrade we're not gonna change our mind this is the same as euro choppy zone as long as this holds we're looking for this to come back into 13 132s right even if it's going to end up higher we think the healthy move here is to see some find a correction and what's interesting are these 3250s right whether it's for that correction to press higher or whether it's for a breakdown nobody has a crystal ball but this is the level we're interested in and this is where we think price is going to try and um and make its way to right um the other thing um cad we've been going on about this for uh, quite some time our base case was that the low was in we're coming back into 24 tens uh sorry 124 tens 125s that's still our base case so we think this week gets interesting as if we get sold here then resumption of the downtrend if we break up much bigger squeeze back into the 128 again it's pretty much the same trade across the board look at that dxy around the 200 week you'll know what's going on on the other charts again uh, let's hope we get some interesting action let's hope uh, cooler heads prevail thank you so much for listening thank you so much for following thank you for all the banter let's see what we get but um you know the um what's interesting is that the um the more you get this vix crushed the more um confidence it gives to the one-way train longs and uh the more confidence it gives to them and the more it grinds the more painful the move can be and the more it can extend but that just means that it's uh gonna be all that much worse when it actually reverses right We'll see what happens. Have an awesome one. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.